Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We are Pastor Don and Janie Seltzer. Mm. We are so glad to be with you this morning here in Carlsbad, California. We're broadcasting live. I'm the spiritual director for the Zig Ziglar family around the world, and that's why we're uh, able to speak with you on this Ziglar space. We're thankful to them. As you're coming on, if you would let us know who you are and where you are. Hi, Oscar. Good to see you. It is, uh, it is, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is Sunday, September the 12th, 2021 in the year of our Lord. Yes, it is. Hello, Kathy. Let us know where you are, friends. And if you would begin to like and share this, hi, Allie, on your Facebook page so that others can hear a message of inspiration and encouragement from the Lord God Almighty. Mr. Ziegler was a strong person of faith, and we want you to know, hello, hello, we want you to know that um, no matter uh, what your tradition is, good morning. I see Maka in New Jersey and Sally's watching. Hey, Tammy, good to see you. Hi, Lisa in North Dakota. And uh, I see um, someone watching that I can't pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. Must be a country I, I'm uh, not familiar with. Hi, Aaron, good to see you. Hi, Devin, good morning. Mm -hmm. If everyone, hi, Randy, they're in Charlotte. Um, we are from Charlotte, North Carolina, yeah. originally. So um, We're grateful for your engaging with us in this yes. time, gathered around the Word and around the cross. Um, Augustine said it well, in things essential, unity, and things non-essential, freedom, but in all things, love. Mm -hmm. I hope that you can write that down or at least mm -hmm. memorize it. Uh, in things essential, unity. You got a major on the majors. Mm -hmm. In things non-essential, freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't major on the minors. In all things love. Show the holy love of Christ in all things. Amen. So we didn't plan this color coordination after being married 48 years. It just happens. <laughs> it could be a test of your marriage. Uh, yes, exactly. Find out what shirt he's going to wear and you don't know the color and then boom. Yes, isn't that great? Here's someone from Africa. Hello, Taboo. Good to see you. Hello, Maria. Hello, Susan. Um, so everyone, uh, we began this time together with our palms up, if you're comfortable with that, um, as a statement of surrender and openness to the mm. Spirit of God. Holy Father, we thank you that we have the privilege of coming together in your holy name. We thank you that you have come, gone ahead of us that you have delivered to us what you would have us say. And we thank you for Jesus, for his teaching. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking on flesh and dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you taught your disciples and that now we continue to learn from you. We thank you and praise you, Holy Spirit, comforter, encourager, the wisdom of God, Guide us and fill us with your Holy Spirit, Father, Abba, Daddy. We belong to you and we thank you that we can run to you like children. For you have your arms wide open to us, full of grace and mercy. And thank you that you have opened the way through Christ, our Savior. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. May your kingdom come. May your will, not mine, not ours, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your sacred presence. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And let us not yield to temptation but rescue us from the evil one, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we are continuing in the Sermon on the Mount. If you've been following with us, then you know that. If you are new today, and we do have new listeners all the time, we encourage you to go to Janie Poet 
on YouTube and you can hear all of the messages, whatever you want to dip into, um, they're all there. For and the last year and a half. Yes, well, beyond that. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, actually, for the last five years, I started yeah. um, as a Ziegler representative, and then when COVID hit, mm -hmm. Pastor Don joined me on Sunday morning. You might want to spell Janie Poet. Janie Poet, J A N, as in Nancy, I E poet just like it sounds that's where you'll find our previous messages mm -hmm. so my goodness we continue to dig in to the teachings of Christ as he asked the multitudes to sit down on the hillside I've been there and seen that that place and it is stunning to think about people coming from all over Galilee and um, listening to the Lord Jesus as he sat down among them and taught them. We have begun just where he did with the Beatitudes. And Jesus said some startling things in the Beatitudes. He basically turned a secular thought upside down. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, and also, quote-unquote, religious thought. And religious thought, too. That's good. That's really good. He really was speaking into the hearts of those who desired to follow him. He was certainly the very Son of God. All of that was yet to be revealed. But there he stepped in with a clarifying message. And it was a clarion call. And there, this is no exception. So he began with, the be, with what we call the Beatitudes, and then he fleshed it out. Wouldn't mm. you say that? Yeah, he ca cast a vision with being the salt and the light. Yes. But then he fleshed it out after uh, 17 through 20. Yes. Of the, I did not come to abolish the law, but fulfill it. Yes. And now he's going, you have heard it was said, but now I say to now you. Now I say, yes. Yeah. Yes, very good. And so this, this passage is no exception. Our message today is entitled, When Evil Crushes Your Spirit. And of course, we commemorate yesterday, we commemorated today the, uh, the collapse of the Twin Towers and, and the devastation here in America that took place at 9-11. And certainly uh, so much, uh, so many people all of us actually were crushed in spirit by the evil that day, and there's more here. So let's dig in. Um, we're going to be, if you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, we're going to be reading uh, just a couple of verses, 38 through 42. So here we go. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Hmm. Why don't you also read Matthew 5, 10 through 12. All little right. backdrop there. All right. It's part of the uh, collection of the Sermon on the Mount and Jesus is giving this, this uh, uh, beatitude. And it's a very somber one. Yes. Uh, but it's very, uh, uh, it's piercing because mm -hmm. Jesus is actually hitting upon it now in 38 through 42. Good, very good. Okay, so Matthew 5, 10 through 12. 12. God blesses those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God blesses you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your, your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Good. Okay. So... Many people use this passage, including whole 
denominations, um, uh, Christians, some Christians um, in particular, certain denominations, use this passage um, uh, from 38 to 42 to, to take a stand on pacifism. Pacifism. It's hard to say that word, isn't it? Um, in other words, that we should never resist uh, evil governments. Uh, we should never fight in wars. Um, that this is um, this is a religious exception. Um, however, as you dig in to the context, it's all about the context, friends. And Jesus, let's give you a little backdrop here. Jesus, when he quoted, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, he was quoting three different places in the, in the Tanakh where judicial instruction was given. This was not for individuals. This was to keep peace within the people of Israel. It was instruction on what to do in matters of law. It was, However, it was guardrails. Yeah, it was, guardrails. It was governmental guardrails. Yes. Because before then, uh, be, they called it the Lex Talionis. Mm. And it's the foundation of justice. Mm. And an eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. What, what happened before then, if you knocked out my eye, I'm going to cut off your head. It was, it was, it was uh, mayhem. It was mm. pandemonium. Mm. It was uh, savage. Mm. The Lex Talionis, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, mm. in the three passages you mentioned in the Old Testament, it's all about order, about guardrails in the governmental realm. Right, and to hold evil at bay within society. However, what happened was that the Jews, uh, the Jewish people, the very people of God, took the eye for the eye and the tooth for a tooth, and, and applied it on an individual level. There was great hostility among the people. There were petty arguments. There were petty lawsuits. It was, it was a very um, uh, turbulent. turbulent society, even among the Jews. I mean, we think about the Roman government and all the, 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 the difficulties that the people suffered from the Romans, but actually, they were also suffering among themselves. Neighbor was against neighbor, uh, family against family. It was kind of the McCoys and the Clampins, you know? It or was the Hatfields. The Hatfields. Um, <laughs> and uh, so Jesus was speaking into the hearts of the individuals sitting there. He knew. You see, Jesus knows everything. He is the Lord God Almighty in the flesh. And he looked out into these, these faces and he knew friend was against friend and neighbor against neighbor. He knew the rancor among people. And he also knew that the people felt oppressed by the Romans, which by the way, I'll just say real quickly, I'm sure Pastor Don will elaborate on this, that um, there was there were no post offices back then, and um, so there were there were sentry, there were guard, there were um, horsemen who would go from point to point and uh, to deliver the mail, if you will. And sometimes people were asked to deliver to go a certain to go a mile to the next horseman for whatever reason, and the people resented being used like that by the Romans. And Jesus was saying, he, look at your heart, people. Look at your heart. When he said, go the extra mile, he's speaking there about our attitude. He's speaking there about character. He's asking us to be a different quality of person. Wouldn't you agree with that, Pastor Don? Yes, I, I feel that uh, if we're gonna follow Christ, it's not gonna be tiptoe through the tulips. No. It's not going to be easy breezy. Uh, write down these three words. They come from last week, but I believe they're appropriate for us in following Christ. These three words, uh, the, the life of Christ, there was sacrifice, mm -hmm. okay? There was submission, and there was suffering. Yes. Those three words embody the life of Christ in his death and his resurrection, but there was a sacrifice, mm -hmm. Okay, he became the substitute for our sins. Yes. There is submission. He submitted to the Father's will, the Father's heart, the Father's plan. And we submit to the ways of Christ. Yes. And then in turn, the suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, the suffering will come. Yes. And it will come from evil people. 
Yes. You need to understand that. It's not just yes. people in general. It's not so much the, the world at large, but it's the mm. evil people. An individual has it out for you. Mm. And it's because of your witness for Christ. Mm. It's not because of the car you drive or the dog you have or because of the house you live in. It's because of you who and you G, who you are in Jesus. Very well said. And uh, it's an important clarification. And so essentially, the more light you shine, the more the e evil hates you. And the evil, uh, evil people mean people that, that cooperate with evil by attacking and insulting, um, reviling you, and saying false things about you because you, of who you are in Christ. Don and I have certainly been tested in this arena. Sometimes we have stood strong and sometimes we failed. But all of us are humans in process learning. We're being trained by the Spirit of God to even in our failures, we're learning. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up if you have failed. We want you to hear the high call and adjust yourself. That's what we do. We adjust ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think the three phrases that Janie and I embrace daily is be brave, stay strong, have courage. Mm -hmm. That's what was said for the Christians in Afghanistan. We say it for ourselves and we say it for you. Mm -hmm. Now, when you think about it, the title is called When Grief, When Evil Crushes Your Spirit. Mm -hmm. Just think about a person okay uh, a life who has hurt you deeply uh, it's almost unspeakable the hurt they've left with you uh, they you have a person who's treated you unfairly uh, they've gossiped about you and all because of the context of you being a Christ follower all because of you being God's man or woman you were abused physically sexually okay emotionally uh, you might have had a person walk out on you because of your commitment to Christ uh, this could have been a mother or father, could have been a son or daughter, could have been a husband or wife. They walked out on you, and they simply left you mm. high and dry. Uh, maybe it's a person you gave your heart to, mm. and you never dreamed of having that crashing into the rocks. They would betray you. Someone you deeply trusted. I mean, with all of your being, you deeply trusted them. Could be a business associate. Right. And they lied to you, mm -hmm. okay? They stole your money. They wounded you mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form. And actually, they ruined your life. And you're left in a pile. Mm -hmm. The title again, When Evil Crushes Your Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saint Arrhenia said, mm -hmm. The glory of God is a human being fully alive. And to be alive consists in beholding and adoring God. Mm -hmm. If you want to be fully alive, okay, you want to be fully uh, vibrant and robust and energetic and dynamic, you want to be uh, full of the Spirit, you want to have this incredible fruitfulness and impact, here's what he says, and to be alive consists in beholding and adoring God. You know, John, as you were reading that, I thought of two people that literally suffered huge trials. I think of the Apostle Paul who was stoned twice, I believe, mm -hmm. and both times got up <laughs> and continued his mission. <laughs> and I think of Stephen who was the first martyr and the Holy, and it was not his choice. It was just because of his his stand as a Christ follower and as a, a, a teacher and preacher of the word. And what Jesus did is the glory of Christ came to him and the people around him, as a matter of fact, that's what brought conversion eventually mm -hmm. to, to Paul. It was certainly was seeds were planted in, in Saul when he saw the face of Stephen shine like an angel because Stephen was seeing the Lord Jesus come and rescue his soul. That's what I think about. This is what Jesus was teaching. This, these verses, my friends, will prepare all of us for the worst of the worst so that we can remain in the loving presence of God when the worst befalls us. Yes. 
Another passage to write down, we told you Matthew 5, 38 through 42, that's what we're looking at. Uh, we told you Matthew 5, 10 through 12, that's the beatitude on persecution. Then 1 Peter 2, uh, 21 through uh, 20, um, uh, 25. Why this is important, because Peter was the one who denied Christ. He was the one who let him down. And from that repentance and from that forgiveness of Christ there on the uh, seaside, uh, seaside, he said, do you love me? And Peter said, you know that I love you. He said, then feed my sheep. There was a true, uh, I would say, uh, cleansing and, and heart conversion. And so Peter, the rest of his life, he lived with sacrifice, he lived with submission, and then he lived with suffering. He says this, for God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about here today. Mm -hmm. In Matthew 5, 38 through 42, God calls you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. What is our North Star? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Where do we go for direction and our compass and, and, and just the focus of our life? Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's because of Jesus. Just as Christ suffered for you, he is your example, and you must follow in his steps. If you're equivocating, if you're doubting, if you're wondering, I don't know, this seems a little too heavy for me. Well, friend, I guess you have to ask, mm -hmm. if Christ has loved you so deeply and profoundly mm -hmm. and has given you everything you can imagine uh, spiritually and for your soul and for your future, can you not follow in his steps and do what is necessary? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to continue to live in a half-hearted, half-baked, sort of compromised way? Jesus is saying, no, this is not for the compromisers. Mm -hmm. This is for the focus, folks who are truly, uh, fully devoted followers. Fully devoted. Yes. Okay, he never sinned, 22, nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. Please remember, these are evil people doing mm -hmm. this to Jesus because of his, his uh, uh, claims of the Messiah, of him uh, and his divinity. He did not retaliate when he was insulted or threatened or revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. Mm. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. Mm. By his wounds, you are healed. Mm. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. Mm. Men and women, you can take that to the bank. That's take the, that to the bank. Yeah, take that to God's bank, yes. you know, because why? Yes. That, that's, that's transcendent. Mm -hmm. That's focused on the upper story, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not living down in, the, in, in just the uh, struggles and the jungle of the lower story. Mm -hmm. That's upper story where you're finally saying, hey, I know what I need to do. When it comes, when an evil person assaults me for my faith, I know what I need to do. Mm -hmm. I don't need to cower. I don't need to, to compromise. I don't need to betray Jesus. I just need to stand strong, okay? Mm -hmm. Those three things. Be brave, stay strong, have courage. Mm, love that. So the word evil in Greek is paneros, and it means full of annoyances, to, to, uh, brings toils, annoyances, perils of a bad nature evil wicked hurtful that's what that's what evil is paneros and um that's the kind of treatment that that is jesus is talking about here and he says not to resist and what what the sense is there it's sort of um it's 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 sort of um a stepping back and not not getting into the fray and going down to the level of paneros, of, of an evil nature. It's to stay intact in who you are in Christ. That's what Jesus is talking about. This is what Jesus is asking people among in Israel to do with one another, to, to not just dive in and go down to the level of an, of an evil attitude, but rather to be to rise above it and to have, well, as as that scripture said, to leave many things in the hands of God Himself, and also to to do the right thing. If someone begs from you, 
if you can help them and they are truly in need, then we are called to do that. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget that. If someone begs you to go that second mile to, to help them and you're exhausted, do it if you can and do more. Jesus is calling us to more and it's all within the parameters of our ability. He's not asking us when we talk about sacrifice and suffering and what was the other S? Submission. And submission, it's all within the wisdom of God. And that's what he asks us to do. Step back, pray, seek the wisdom of God in the situation. We're all called to be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to anger. So, the, th so this resisting, it, it not resisting uh, evil is, is really a position of strength. We're backing up and we're being prayerful. We're seeking God's wisdom, and what shall I do here, Lord? We all have, there's so many needs in this world, and so we must seek the heart of the Father. We're not in, in called to meet everybody's need all the time, but we are called to do the load that God has given us. Mm -hmm. What Matthew 5, 38 through 42, Jesus is giving you more hooks to hang your head on. Mm -hmm. He's trying to give you preparation. You know, prior preparation prevents poor performance. Five Ps to success. Prior preparation mm -hmm. prevents poor performance. And he's trying to tell his disciples, his listeners, listen, in verse 30, 38, he says, okay, you know about an eye of an eye and a, and a tooth for a tooth. Here, let me tell you something. In verse 39, he says this. Um, um, he says, but I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. Jesus is saying this is not a physical altercation. What the cheek, the right cheek was, it was common. Most of the people then were right-handed. And so if they hit you on the right cheek, they could hit you right there. Okay? And so Jesus is saying what this is referring to is not physicality, but verbal contempt. If they hit you on the right cheek and they insult you and there's derision and there's, there's an incredible uh, sense of uh, uh, mocking of, of who you are, Jesus says, give them the left cheek. Mm -hmm. So in other words, let them keep on. Right. Let them keep on. Let them mock. Let them, under, let them see themselves. Let them fall on their own face. Right? Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so in that, Jesus is saying there come a time when someone will cross your path and they don't like you. Mm -hmm. It's not because of the clothes you wear, the way you comb your hair, or whatever. They don't like you. It's because of spiritual. Mm -hmm. And because of this evil person in your life, mm -hmm. they're having a way to, whether it's texting or who knows, Facebook, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. they're going to have uh, an incredible sense of ridicule. Mm -hmm of your faith. Mm -hmm. And and this is not a take a stand. This is not a time to take a stand. This is a time to just simply step back. Mm, step back. Lovingly disengage. Mm. I think that's those are two important words. Lovingly disengage. This is about disengaging. It's it's um it's it's wisdom here. It's letting God deal with the person. We are not the judge. God is the judge and his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so we let God step in. God does a better job. And I have watched this. I have seen this. God does a better job at judgment and discipline than we do. So let God be the one. I mean, look at the life of, of Jesus himself. Look at the way he handled the, the attacks. Uh, and by the way, um, this, doesn't, we're, this doesn't apply to defending your family, for example. This doesn't apply to defending your community. This doesn't apply to defending your nation. This applies to person to person. This is what this is talking about. And so let's keep emphasizing that. If you're called to defend uh, the, the weak, the helpless, step in, take action, do it. I've had to do that. 
There's times when God calls us to step in. That's, that's a different matter altogether. This is a, how we handle personal attacks towards us. From an evil person. Yes. Who, yes. Is, who is assaulting our faith. Yes. See, it's very specific what Jesus is bringing out here. And there's no, no uh, sort of wink, wink, nod, nod. We'll just broad stroke this and then there'll be no more police force. There'll be no more government. <laughs> there's no more force. There, there's nothing. If you, if you took this to the nth degree, this has nothing to do about structures and about government and about the military and about the police. It's talking about, very specifically, about an individual and their journey with Christ and being assaulted by someone, verbally assaulted, someone who has said, I, I don't like your faith. I can't stand your faith and I think you're a phony. The list goes on. Well, and they may not use those words. I mean, um, there's a lot that people... Um, do in the name of evil without saying why they're doing it or what they're, uh, why they're attacking. It could have to do with, with your standing for a principle and, um, and it's a godly principle but someone thinks, calls you a Judas, calls you uh, evil for taking a, a stand that is godly. So there's, there's many ways that this rears its ugly head. Um, I, I think that something that came to me very strong is that Jesus is asking us to have a conciliatory spirit even in the face of evil. Let me say that again. Jesus is calling us to have a conciliatory spirit even in the face of evil. There's strength in that. Remember where Jesus said, blessed, God blesses the meek and they will inherit the earth. The meek are those who harness their strengths. They're, they're, they harness, you know, we, we, Jesus wants us to have, exhibit self-control. Again, we all fail at this. We fail miserably sometimes. Pick yourself up and learn from it. Okay, the next time that happens, I'm gonna respond differently. I'm going to respond with I'm going to shut my mouth and let that, let that person insult me, uh, abuse me, and I'm just going to take it. And I'm, but I'm going to be under the strength and the hand of God. I'm going to have a conciliatory spirit. Um, I, um, I, yeah. So the other thing I, I, I noticed is that I've already said this, but we also do want to give what we can give and do what is right. When we can do what is right, we would, should work to resolve quarrels and not, and this, is, this was going on right and left apparently in Israel. People were just dragging other people to court right and left and just, it was chaos. You know, friends, we are called to be people of peace. Jesus said, peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give. I, be not anxious, neither shall you be afraid. Believe in God, believe also in me. We're to be people of peace. He get, puts our, our, sh the shoes of peace on our feet. Look at how he walked between a raging crowd who literally, I saw this too in Israel, the, 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 the cliff where Jesus was what, by an angry mob. Actually, this was right outside of Nazareth after he had declared himself to be the Messiah. An angry mob drug him or, or pushed him against a cliff, desiring to throw him over the cliff. And what does Jesus do? He stands and looks at them with great strength and great power and great wisdom and great gentleness. And he simply walks through the middle of the cloud that parts as he walks. That's walking with God's authority. And as people of God, we have that same authority. Does it mean that we will walk through an angry crowd unharmed? I can't promise that. That we might be stoned like Stephen. We might be thrown over that cliff. But if we can maintain, this is a very high call. This is very, very high. And this is, can only take place by the power of the Holy Spirit. And a and love relationship. A love relationship. Of letting him love you and you love him in return. Absolutely. With so Jesus. that power is, motive, is fueled by the love. Amen. And he calls us 
to that high commandment to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. Also on this point about uh, turning the other cheek, it's much uh, smaller. It's not dealing with the evil person, but it is an application because mm -hmm. it's your right to retaliate. Let's say if you have uh, a member of your household that is messy and you're tired of telling them to clean up their mess. So what you do is you compound the problem by having more mess, mm. okay? That's retaliatory spirit. I see. Uh, you have a person that you meet at the coffee shop who is uh, two or three times late, mm. okay? Mm. And so you get the picture, you're always gonna be waiting for him or her. So you now mm. are going to play a game, mm. you're gonna be late. So this passive is, aggressive. It's passive aggressive. Right. And what we're talking about is, is walking in the steps of Jesus with sacrifice, with submission and suffering. Mm. And that may even be the messy house. That may even be the late appointment at the coffee shop. Mm. But it's the examination of your attitudes mm -hmm. that says, hey, wait a minute. I can't be playing games because I'm, I'm a Christ follower. This is really about character. Jesus is talking about our character. And um, I'm sorry. Matthew 5, verse 39, he says, um, 40, rather. If you're sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat to. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was going on from a legal matter is that when there are people who had nothing but their shirt on, okay? That's mm -hmm. where the phrase comes from. Uh, they have nothing but, but a shirt on their back. And so when they're going for the shirt um, and the way it was in judicial systems in Israel, rabbinic law, uh, it was cold at night. Mm. And in the chill of the evening, the one thing that could protect that person was her cloak. Mm. It was a heavy coat, mm. okay? It was an outer garment. And so even if there was a financial ruling by the judge against the person who owed money, they have given their shirt, now they're going for the cloak. It was required by the judge to give the cloak back at nighttime, mm. okay, for eight hours. Mm. So he could wear it sleeping outside. Mm. Outside of that, he had the cloak for another 16 hours. Kind of strange, but that's the way it worked. <laughs> so, so a fight over a cloak. Right, but the, the poor man didn't have anything else. Right, right. And so the judge had compassion. Jesus, okay, <laughs> he raises the bar and he says, uh, if you're sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. And I'm sure his listeners were saying, but Jesus, the law says, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. That's what it is for revenge and for retaliatory spirit. Uh, the law says you give the shirt, but hold on to the cloak, even for eight hours. And Jesus is saying, give them the cloak also. See, the right to retaliate, the right to things. Mm -hmm. We have things in our life that we say, oh, I would just die if I lost that. Mm -hmm. I would just die if that mm -hmm. just was taken away from me. Jesus is asking, even if your cloak is taken from you, mm -hmm. will you follow me? Mm -hmm. Even if you have nothing, you don't have a shirt, you don't have a cloak, you don't have anything you're in a hot mess okay and jesus said i'm here for you you know um god rewards those who live this way i just want to say that this whole instruction makes perfect sense to me um we went through a difficult period where um i won't go into the details of it but pretty much all the furniture in our house was taken by my mother and father. And um, it was a, a very contentious uh, situation and Don and I just stepped back and let them take what e everything, essentially. The beds that our son slept on. Uh, unfortunately, uh, um, yeah, there were some very, very, very deep things. And God, <laughs> it, as only, you know, we just, our attitude was, we're not going to fight for our stuff. No. And I have to tell you, friends, that when we um, moved to another location, 
the house that we were able to buy, the man who lived, it's the house we're in right now, the man who lived here turned and looked to me and said, Janie, do you need any furniture? Mm -hmm. I literally almost just wept right there. And I said to him, George, yes, everything has been taken. And he said, go around the house and mark everything you would like to have. Wow. That is exactly, I'm sorry, I wasn't going to share. That's a very personal story. But we have lived to see what God will do if you will just step back and not resist evil. Friends, God knows don't ever think that he doesn't see. Don't ever think that he doesn't care. And don't ever think that he will not give back even more than was taken from you. And that's exactly hap what happened to us. If you're truly surrendered to the sacrificial, submissive, and suffering Christ, if you're truly surrendered, and we were, we were in that because I... I just had such love for Janie's family, but I'm sorry that they didn't feel the same for us, and we have uh, taken that as a, a character call. We yes. take very painful surgery, but listen, you have gone through others yes. out there, have gone through probably different things, but with deep pain. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you that Christ will not waste the pain. You're not identified by your loss. Mm -hmm. You're identified by the Christ Lord Jesus, King of all kings. Amen. He's the lifter of your heads. He's the ruler of your life. He's the one who sits on the throne. And you can take confidence every day that you have before you. He will be there for you. Yes, he will. And what he's trying to do in Matthew 5, 38 through 42 is prepare. Prepare you for the curveballs that come from people. Prepare you for the, the wounds that can come from people. Deep wounds. Uh, lacerations that you never thought were possible. And from people like this, uh, Janie's folks and all of that, we just said, huh, what is this? Mm -hmm. But God did. And he's asking us, will you respond in a way that shows you belong to me? Matthew 5, this is um, 41. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Janie alluded to this. It, what happened in the Roman culture it was like a Pony Express. And so then, in turn, uh, after a horse would be weary, they go rustle up another horse from whatever villager, and then they would continue to take the mail. And sometimes when the horses ran out, they took uh, Jews, they took uh, civilians, they took uh, the people of, of the land, and they said, okay, run a mile. And Jesus is saying, all right, you may be treated like a horse, but if you run one mile, then be willing to run two miles. Mm -hmm. Okay. There it is. There's another piece and, of. And I guess the the key thing it's attitude. Yeah. Okay. It's yes. uh, you know it, you're saying, gosh, I don't have time for this. I didn't plan on this Pony Express at the Jew, <laughs> but Jesus is saying, hey, go forward, run. Interrupt your yeah. schedule. I'm the oldest of five children. I'll be seventy in a few weeks and. A few uh, weeks. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Yeah. And um, um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the five children, uh, I'm 70 and the others, uh, one passed away. He was 68 a few months ago. Then I have another one, 64, 62, and then a, do a sister, I believe she's about 59, thereabouts. But I have one brother, um, the 62-year-old, okay? No, excuse me, the 64-year-old, Greg. Every time Dad asked him to cut the yard, to mow the lawn, oh my goodness, you'd think he'd want a colonoscopy. You'd mm -hmm. think he was having oral surgery. He was just the worst. And, and I could look out the window, because we took turns of cutting the grass, and, and he was cutting the grass as... You could hear him groaning. You could hear him moaning. And I had the same thing in college. There was an individual. We lived with seven. There were seven of us. Don't say the name, please. I won't say the name. Okay. There's seven of us. And in the, uh, we each had our roll of cooking and roll of dishes. Okay? But one person, they didn't want to do the dishes. Mm. And how you knew? 
because they had this self-talk in the kitchen. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to do the dishes. <laughs> I can't believe how many plates are here. By the time if he'd been quiet and just washed them right. and washed them cheerfully, right. you know, making them clean. Whenever I cut the grass, I'd be looking around. I'd see some trees, possibly some birds. I didn't know. I'd just sort of make the most of it. When you are going through this right to retaliation, a right to things, a right to time, mm -hmm. and then we get to the last thing, a right to money. So, so I love how you brought that in because um, all of us have situations that we don't want to do, but we're asked to do. Um, so I think you've made it loud and clear, Don, that this applies to our attitude towards chores, yeah. towards responsibilities. Um, this is all about knowing that the Lord, do it as unto the Lord. That's what I, that's the motto that I took uh, when life was especially challenging with children and church and uh, responsibilities in the community. And you, I only went Christmas, oh my goodness, the, the challenges of decorating and you're the mom and you have to make it all happen is I would just say, Lord, just I do this as unto you. I do this as unto you. In verse 42, uh, the fourth one, give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow, okay? And again, this is all in the context of evil, uh, the evil person. He's assaulting you for your, your uh, convictions with, with Jesus. And, and so there has to be discernment here. Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. What, one of the things that, that needs to happen for Christians, you need to be on a systematic plan. I, I call it percentage giving. If you're a Christ follower and you have been given, uh, ultimately the, the goal biblically is tithing, mm -hmm. one-tenth off the top. People will ask me as a pastor for 40-some years, Pastor, is it gross or net? Okay, should I give? I said, what do you think? They said, I think it's gross, but I hope it's net. <laughs> really. And so, so it's, you give gross, but, but maybe one-tenth is way too much. It's Mount Everest for you. Well, you go in increments. Mm -hmm. You start to say, okay, here we are. We can do it 2% of our total gross, of our total uh, receipts or our earnings. Then we go up to 4% after two more months. Whatever it be, you set a plan, you, your husband, you, your children, whoever it is, but you get on a f faithful, dedicated plan of giving. Mm -hmm. Then you can see that uh, it's, it's called A, B, T, F. Attentiveness, behavior, thinking, feelings. Mm -hmm. If you pay attention to this area of giving and you start to become a responsible steward in the way that God wants you uh, to, to live. Uh, Oswald Chambers said, if Christianity doesn't affect the way I handle my money and my marriage, it's worth absolutely nothing. I agree with that. Your money, our 40 some years of marriage, we have been faithful tithers. We have been. Has it been easy? No way, Jose. Uh, it's been blooming tough. Uh, you had to see it. It was not only tough, it was blooming tough. Blooming. <laughs> okay. But we did it because we wanted to put a smile on his face. We did it because we played for an audience of one. We did it because we wanted to be obedient to his word. Well, and so what I'm trying to say is, mm -hmm. is that have a graduated tithe, have percentage giving. Start to get yourself to the goal of 10%. And if God blesses you beyond even 10% of your, of your earnings that you can imagine, then give him more. Give him uh, above and beyond. That's called offerings. Give that to him. Because you can't outgive God. Again, he sees everything, and uh, he loves a generous giver with a cheerful heart. So uh, Jesus uh, definitely doesn't shy away from talking about being generous givers with wisdom and supporting ministries like ours. <laughs> uh, that's not why we're saying this, but to be the kind, we are, um, we're dedicated to the kingdom of God and to the work of God. And that's first and foremost where tithings go. But you also, if you're, it's interesting because Don used to use the analogy of 10 bananas. If God gave, gives you 10 bananas, if we give him back one, we're doing it as a statement of acknowledgement that it all belongs to God. So we're doing it as a statement of thank you, Father. Thank you. That's all giving is. It's thanking God for the abundance of his blessings. It's an acknowledgement of his ownership over us because 
you know, we can't take it with us. Mm -hmm. And in, in our lifetime, the ability to earn what you're, you have earned is because of God's graciousness. The mind he's given you, the network he's given you, the job he has at you, he has for you rather. And so as you continue to give him thanks, you show it not only in words, you not only show it in forgiveness, but you show it in giving. Mm -hmm. That's why in this passage here, he's saying, those who are my children will be givers. Matthew 23, 23, please write this address down. For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens but you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus. People have said to me, well, tithing's Old Testament. Uh, excuse me, uh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. He clearly affirmed, the, he didn't come to abolish the law, he mm -hmm. came to fulfill it. And here he says, you should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important. Janie gifted me an early birthday present, 70th, uh, coming up in a few... Uh, Friday. Uh, Friday. <laughs> I going to say in a few it's weeks. It's a big 7-0. It's a hard one to put your head around. But um, uh, our um, golden retriever of 12 years, mm -hmm. Peaches, uh, died July 30th. Mm -hmm. And I, I said one night to Janie, I said, I miss Peaches because she was my dog. She was the one who sat, slept on my side of the bed on the floor and rode with me in the car and did we did walks we went to the park everything and so uh, a few Sundays ago Janie said I've got a surprise for you I said what's that I've got you a um, baby uh, a puppy coming a yellow lab and she's gonna be about 10 weeks when she gets here and uh, I showed him a picture yeah I said and, uh, and all I could say was baby cakes <laughs> that was her name that's her name baby cakes. baby cakes yeah. Yeah. So we had Sunny, Golden Retriever, Pumpkin, Golden Retriever, Peaches, Golden Retriever, and now Yellow Lab, Baby Cakes. Here's the interesting thing about walking peach, uh, Baby Cakes around the block. I'm so accustomed with Peaches, that's 12 years of a relationship, of straight, okay? We go on the sidewalk, we go straight. <laughs> I'm, I'm having to adjust to the zigzag pattern, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's a diagonal because she comes back. But it's just she's just a puppy, right? right. <laughs> I'm having to adjust, and then I'm also she's adjusting adorable. to she runs, and so I have to be make sure I don't hurt her neck or whatever. Yes, with the leash. But she runs, and I'll run uh, catching up with her, and then she'll stop and slam on the brakes. <laughs> and she's trying to tell me who's in control here. <laughs> And, and what I'm trying to ask for you, from you, is a straight pattern on the sidewalk. No zigzags, no slamming on the brakes, no hitting the gas pedal. I want you to be one who is walking in obedience to Jesus, step by step, yes. day by day, yes. with joy, with strength, with hope, with love. Yes. Father, we thank you for this time, and we thank you that you have made it so clear to us how you would like us to be in this world, what attitude should, be, should permeate. Um, but Lord, th none of this is possible except through you. Hmm. It's all you. As we give our heart to you and let you love us, the love that floods and fills us, makes us whole, is the same love that we shine out to the world, even in the midst of darkness and evil. Lord, there are many around this planet who are suffering right now. I pray in the name of Christ that if they belong to you, Lord, that they would suffer with the sweetness of spirit, that says, I belong to Jesus and he sees me. He understands what I'm going through and he will help me. I pray for those who don't know Christ, that they would, they would bow before his holy throne, that they would say to him, Lord Jesus Christ, son of the living God, forgive me a sinner. May I be like you, give me your spirit. May I walk as you walked. May I be light and salt on planet earth. And Lord God, just I surrender, 
I'm willing to sacrifice, I'm willing to suffer if I get to know you and love you with my heart, mind, and soul. You hear every cry, you hear every whimper and every deep weep that comes from within, and you are our comforter and our provider. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father God, we thank you for your spirit that guides and directs us uh, through the word. We thank you that you have given us a roadmap. Mm -hmm. And as we're all looking in our life and trying to wear the spiritual armor, mm -hmm. help us to take to heart what the psalmist has said. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. Mm -hmm. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall. Mm -hmm. For the Lord holds them by the hand. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, that you give us so many rich passages. We've seen that in Matthew 5 today of the understanding how we've got to be brave and stay strong and have courage and walk in the steps of Jesus and be able to suffer with Jesus, be able to sacrifice with Jesus, and to be able to be submitted with Jesus. And the prophet Isaiah says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. I thank you, Lord, that you have given us enough direction. We don't have to be confused and befuddled and mystified. You've given us enough clarity. We can do what you've asked us to do. Now may we pay attention, attentiveness. May we have new behavior. May we have a thinking that really is consistent with this behavior. Changed thinking, Lord, not stinking thinking. And then we have the feelings that will come afterwards in this do not take revenge my friends Romans 12 but leave room for God's wrath for it is written it is mine to avenge I will repay says the Lord and lastly Robert Weber has said the crushing blow to all evil is found on the hard wood of the cross and in Christ's resurrection. And so, Lord, we claim the hard wood of the cross is our reason for living. Mm -hmm. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me. Father, we thank you and give you all the glory, for you are the glory. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling away and who will bring us with great joy into his glorious presence. All glory to him who alone is God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory power, authority, and dominion belong to him who is before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. All glory to God. Shalom, friends. Godspeed, my friends. Godspeed. We thank you for being with us. If you would like and share this on your Facebook page or wherever you have social media so that others can understand what to do with a grieving heart, may they take it to Jesus. All right, friends, mm -hmm. see you next time. And we say to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. 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 All right, friends, see you soon. Bye-bye.